The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by your generous support of Catholic TV. Catholic TV, in cooperation with Channel 68, invites you to celebrate the sacred mysteries, listen to God's Word, and in the Holy Eucharist, proclaim Jesus' victory over death until He comes in glory. Pastor of St. Mary of the Assumption Parish in Brookline, Massachusetts, and it's a joy to be celebrating these sacred mysteries with you today on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. St. Augustine once wrote and prayed that our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. For those times that our hearts have been misdirected and not chosen good, we have sinned against the Lord, and we acknowledge our need for his mercy in the depths of our hearts and being. You came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom, Lord of mercy. mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let us pray that the love of Christ's heart may touch the world with healing and peace. Father, we honor the heart of your Son, broken by man's cruelty, yet symbol of love's triumph, pledge of all that man is called to be. Teach us to see Christ in the lives we touch, to offer him living worship by love-filled service to our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people sacred to the Lord your God. He has chosen you from all the nations on the face of the earth to a people peculiarly his own. It was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord has set his heart and chose you, for you are really the smallest of all nations. It was was because the Lord loved you and because of his fidelity the oath he had sworn to your fathers that he brought you out with his strong hand from the place of slavery and ransom you from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand then that the Lord your God is God indeed, the faithful God who keeps his merciful covenant down to the father's generation, toward those who love him and keep his commandments, but who repays with destruction a person who hates him. He does not dally with such a one, but makes them personally pay for it. You shall therefore carefully observe the commandments, the statutes, and the decrees that I enjoin on you today. 
the word of the Lord. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, We have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior to the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him, and he in God. We have come to know and believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord. and humble of heart. Alleluia, Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I gave praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Last summer, I was at a conference in St. Paul, Minnesota, and on an off afternoon, me and a friend of mine went up to the St. Paul Cathedral, which sits atop of Summit Hill, gorgeous view of the entire Twin Cities area. St. Paul Cathedral seats over 3,000 people, and it has bow arts architecture, beautiful rose windows, It was designed back in 1905 by Emmanuel Masqueray, and his goal in designing the beautiful cathedral was that all people could see and hear Mass, be full, active, conscious participants 
in the liturgical celebration. The Archbishop of the time, Archbishop Ireland, his goal with that cathedral was that it would stand for centuries. Beautiful, beautiful structure in and outside. There are four ornate side chapels. One is dedicated to the, to sacred, the sacred Heart of Jesus. That is what we commemorate today in this wonderful solemnity. The side chapel to the Sacred Heart was built during the Great Depression. It expressed the devotion to Jesus, who truly understood the people's struggles at that time, back in the late 1920s and early 30s, the abject poverty, the struggle, the hunger, the labor shortages, etc. And that altar, that side chapel, was built and founded by the same workers. And it's a unique structure. The altar is decked out in red, and in Latin, the words ex corde sicio ecclesia nascitur are written. Translation, from this riven heart springs forth the church. From the sacred heart of Jesus, we spring forth by our baptism. We are united in love, out of love, created out of love by our creator God. In the sacred heart of Jesus, we recognize the totality of the divine, of his being, and of the message of Christianity, which is the revolutionary newness of the gospel revealed and given to you and to me, and to make ourselves a gift of love without reserve. God, in the book of Deuteronomy, has set us in his heart. He has chosen us to love one another in acts of conversion, reparation, gratitude, commitment, and total commitment to Christ and his saving work. That's a devotion that's been passed down through many centuries to the church and to you and to me today, united at the altar as church, present here in this chapel in Watertown, Massachusetts, or viewing on television or on the Internet. Christ unites us out of love and calls us to an ongoing conversion. Those who labored in the cathedral of St. Paul came to the Sacred Heart of Jesus with all of their burdens in their lives were truly transformed. May that same loving Lord strengthen and heal the hearts of all in all of our churches, in all of our cathedrals, in all of our chapels. And as church and the solemnity, we are proud to profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is love. We know that love most especially through the sacred heart of Jesus. And it's that heart to whom we turn to hear our prayers. That with the love of a shepherd's heart, the leaders of the church may ignite all believers' faith into active ministry. We pray to the Lord. That with the love of a shepherd's heart, all the leaders of the nations may seek the lasting good of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That with the love of the shepherd's heart, all pastors may seek out those who are far from the church because of abortion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That with the love of a shepherd's heart, our community will reach out to those who need our assistance and their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All of these things we ask in the name of Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
sacred heart, O love divine, to keep us near to thee and make our love so like to thine that we may wholly be. Heart of Jesus, hear, O heart of love divine, listen to our prayer, make us always thine. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, look on the heart of Christ, your Son, filled with love for us. Because of his love, accept our Eucharist and forgive our sins. Grant this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lifted high on the cross, Christ gave his life for us, so much did he love us. From his wounded side flowed blood and water, the fountain of sacramental life in the church. To his open heart, the Savior invites all men to draw water in joy from the springs of salvation. Now, with all saints and angels, we praise you forever. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest. We come to you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it. Grant it peace and unity throughout the world. We offer them for Benedict, our Pope, for Sean, our Bishop, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. Remember all of us gathered here before you. You know how firmly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. We offer you the sacrifice of praise for ourselves and those who are dear to us. We pray to you, our living and true God, for our well-being and redemption. In union with the whole church, we honor Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. We honor Joseph, her husband, the apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. We honor Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all the saints. May their merits and prayers gain us your constant help and protection. Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Grant us your peace in this life. Save us from final damnation and count us among those you have chosen. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you in offering in spirit and in truth. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The day before he suffered, he took bread in his sacred hands. 
and looking up to heaven to you, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son. We, your people and your ministers, recall his passion, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension into glory. And from the many gifts you have given us, we offer to you, God of glory and majesty, this holy and perfect sacrifice, the bread of life, and the cup of eternal salvation. Look with favor on these offerings and accept them as once you accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your angel may take the sacrifice to your altar in heaven. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. For ourselves, too, we ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and love. Do not consider what we truly deserve, but grant us your forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Through him you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Heart of Christ, we sing your praises, wellspring of eternal life. Through the sorrows of your passion, we find refuge from our strife. 
Heart of Christ, how you embody all the wonder of God's love, how you tell the tender mercies showered from our God above. Heart of Christ, who brings us healing, teach the lowly and the weak, let us know your loving kindness. Show yourself to all who seek. Let us pray. Father, may this sacrament fill us with love, draw us closer to Christ, your Son, and help us to recognize him in others. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. worshiped God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord has invited us to the altar, and this great prayer has brought benefit to ourselves, the church, and the whole world. Please help the television mass to continue by sending a donation to Father Reed, Catholic TV, Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471, or watch and contribute online at catholictv.com.